right, all right, all right, as they say in Austin. <laughs> well, good. All right. Today I'm here with uh, Joel Niedig from the Sibba Chain. And uh, what he does is really interesting because I'm, I'm excited to have him here today working with the blockchain. Understanding the apps that go into blockchain are, is the confusing things for a lot of people, but it's a very hot topic. So I'm interested to talk to him a little more today about what's going on in his world. And uh, so today, welcome, Joel Needig. Yeah, thanks, Adam, for having me. Yeah, welcome. I know uh, you have listed in your profile that you're a serial entrepreneur. And, and that, I thought, was one of the best descriptions I, I've heard of you because you're, you're everywhere. I see you doing a lot of things. You bring a lot of energy to everything you do. And so it's exciting to, to find a little bit more about what, what you're doing with the blockchain and Simba Chain, obviously, uh, dealing with applications and software and and how things are rolling out for you. I know in general right now, we've all been going through different things with COVID-19 over the last few months. So obviously there's been a lot of disruptions in supply chains and you know plans for what everyone's been doing. So how have you been doing over the last few months and what have you been up to? Yeah, it, it, thanks again for the, the nice comments. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been really interesting um, to say the least. I mean, the one thing about Simba Chain um, is our company is distributed by design. So we, this company um, has, has offices, but we've, everybody always has worked from home, even from the beginning of the company. So it's kind of been interesting. We've been, you know, remotely working. Um, and the reason is because our, our company uh, is in different continents and different, you know, we're all over the place, different countries. So we kind of came together and me and my co-founder, Dr. Ian Taylor, he's a professor at the University of Notre Dame. He's my, he's our CTO. And he, we just kind of assembled, you know, kind of like our dream team with this company of people that we've known from the past and different things like that. So um, my previous company was Atlas 3D yep. um, and we were um, acquired by Siemens in November. Yes. Congratulations um, so, on that. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, so and then I'm still um, still help out uh, at ITMCO too. So that's a family business um, yep. that my uh, grandfather and great uncle started back in 1955. So yeah, it's just been we we've I'm just all about collaborating with different people and you know building cool projects and that's been pretty much been my focus um, since I've uh, kind of got out of college. Yeah, and I know uh, specifically now with what you're doing with Simba Chain and also. I know for people that don't know exactly what blockchain is, and I'm not complaining, uh, I'm not saying that I know everything about it either. I'm actually just trying to absorb more and more as I go. And it's a, it's a new field, relatively. Uh, everyone's kind of somewhat familiar with what happened with Bitcoin, and uh, there's been both positive and negative there. So there's a strange feeling in the community about that. But it's something that I think is... Um, hard for a lot of people to grasp. So maybe I'm talking to a, a professional now here at Blockchain Basics. Can you kind of, kind of give us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, Bitcoin came out in 20 uh, or 2008, um, actually 2009, out of the, basically out of the financial crisis. And what mm -hmm. it was realized is that with all the quantitative easing and the different things like that, we needed to have a hardened uh, currency that wasn't relying on, um, you know, these, centralized banks or different things that could, um, you know, really uh, control or stop uh, the flow of money to, you know, different people. And so Bitcoin came out and it's kind of, I kind of relate Bitcoin. The best way I can describe it is that um, it's like mining gold. So mm -hmm. there's a, there's a limited supply. Um, it takes work, energy to, to mine it. So it takes, it uses GPUs or ASIC miners as they won't, we won't get into that today, but it takes, computing data, um, energy to go and, and re unlock these coins. And it's basically like solving prime numbers. Um, and prime numbers as they get bigger and bigger, harder to solve. And so it calls, you know, causes that, but, um, that's, that's basically what it is. And then it's a digital currency. So we pretty much operate, some people still operate in cash, but, um, we, you know, if you you're using your credit cards, you're using your debit cards, you're pretty much operating in a digital society. And so it's just a digital currency that you can transfer without having to go through any type of banking mechanism or anything. And the value that it brings is um, it doesn't require, um, like I said, it's a peer to peer. So it doesn't require any type of authority to say, yes, um, everybody's on the same ledger. And so it's not like, you know, a bank at, you know, Bank of America or Chase, and you're trying to like transfer funds over there, and the one guy will go, yeah, you've got this, okay. So you even see J.P. Morgan now getting into 
those, this kind of ledger idea where it's like, it's a lot easier to transact. If everybody's on the same ledger, we know there can't be like check kiting and all this other stuff. You know, you ever put a, if you ever even make a thousand dollar deposit to a bank that you've never, um, uh, that you've never done business with, they'll go, well, we're going to have to put a one week hold on this. Well, sure. with Bitcoin, it's instantaneous. You know, you're going to know um, how this synchronizes and it's all, it's all decentralized. So it's, like I said, it's, it's um, managed by, a, there's big companies that are now mining, you know, the different things, but you, you control all your own private keys and everything like that. And so you've seen hacks and different things like that, but that's all been because people have been, have been comp. It's not because the network's been compromised it's because you people's private keys, basically your password has been leaked out or, mm. or taken from somebody. So the, the network has been extremely robust. And now, so you already see Microsoft has just built an identity um, capability on Bitcoin. So it's something to say that Microsoft thinks it's, it's secure enough to build an identity, um, which, you know, the identity has become a big deal in our society, right? Because, yeah. you know, privacy and everything like that. So there's big companies get into this and I think it's only going to grow as we, as we see it further. So I think we've only scratched the surface. It's like early days of the internet. Yeah. You brought up a couple key things that I'm, I've been queuing in on myself. You know, you talked about understanding um, a centralized ledger versus a distributed ledger, which is what the power that gives to you inside of the blockchain is to have that digital thread of a secure ledger that's distributed through as many, am I getting this right? You can correct me if I'm wrong, but as many blockchains as possible are holding that information. And that's how it's, it's secure. The ledger is secure in all those different spots. So instead of having one centralized ledger where then you have to go to that middleman and say, hey, is this okay if I do this? And you have to wait for their whole process of approval. And a lot of times the percentage they take out of doing that transaction, uh, it goes to a decentralized where, the, where it's controlled by anyone who has that packet of data and nothing can be changed inside of it because it's decentralized and that ledger exists then out there amongst many different places, hence decentralized. And you no longer have that ledger in one place that's controlled by some, any firm or company that's trying to do some sort of, someone who's kind of right. taking, taking that middleman approach and it, it takes that and decentralizes it. So that's my understanding as my, as I get more involved in this is, the power behind it is, is again, you know, the word is used a lot of digital thread, but it's something that is where, where we're going where exists now. People are using it. It's just that it can be used in a lot of different ways. And Bitcoin was maybe a first example or one of the most prominent examples. But that's what you've been doing is working on how to take different applications and applying them in that same kind of a um, scenario and then coming up with app applications that integrate. So that's my general like uh, yeah. view of what's going on. But that's another reason I wanted to talk to you a little bit more because of all of your involvement in that. And I know you've been breaking out applications and working with different ways to approach the blockchain. And uh, so Maybe, maybe talk a little bit about that. What's been going on with Simba over there? And I know you have a lot of great things going on, but what do you see as some of the, you know, in additive manufacturing specifically, are there additional applications that you're seeing that can spur out of blockchain? Right, yeah. And that's the thing, like what you said is like, when you think about databases or centralized ledgers, there, there's, there's a consensus algorithm and it's the admin. The admin controls, hey, this is it. But in a blockchain, when you're decentralized, there's, there's an automatic consensus algorithm that's running that all the parties are becoming are agreeing to in a, in a more rapid way. So that's, that's really the power that, and that's where we, that's why you see Simba in a lot of complex supply chain uh, use cases. Mm -hmm. um, so one example is for Tokes. So Tokes restaurant, they have like 200 different um, locations in uh, Mexico and they're a large uh, part of uh, Gigantico, which is a larger corporation, a conglomerate, 24 billion uh, market cap. But um, so we partnered with them and the University of Notre Dame, and we're um, basically tracking the um, sustainability of their coffee. So they actually control their supply chain all the way from the farmers to um, the, uh, the roasters to the co-op and then all the way to the restaurant or the, or the grocery store where it's sold. So it's pretty awesome. And they're very committed. They're part of the, uh, the United Nations um, sustainability group. So they're really focused on maintain like everybody just like coca-cola they want everybody in the supply chain to have profit 
So that's Coca-Cola is built that way. Coca-Cola is completely distributed um, in how they manufacture and then all the way to selling and everything like that. And that's a sustainable supply chain. And so Tokes is very um, concerned about that and they want to make sure that their farmers all the way to the co-op or the roasters and everybody's making money in between. Um, and uh, you might hear this term like ESG. So it's like economic, social and uh, governance. Okay. Um, and that's a big, that's a big deal that people are really focusing on and like measuring comp corporations to how well they, they do that. Um, Unilever just said they're going to be using blockchain to, um, for deforest, like to be um, deforestation free by like 2023, I think. So, you know, you see these multi-billion dollar companies really getting into it and really seeing the power that they can have because it is, it provides that immutability and non-reputability. So any, so people can go in there and see that transactions have been digitally signed by, by, um, you know, they call them call these like oracles or, or these, um, these secure or trusted, um, uh, people or organizations, um, or software, you know, different software. And, and that's where, uh, you know, other use cases, like you've seen the additive manufacturing that we've been getting, you've talked about the digital thread, um, the project we're doing with the air force, uh, spawn from that and uh, we're on to our, our phase two with them. We have a phase two with Navy and um, we have a project with the Marine Corps. Um, so we, we've kind of branched into all these different agencies. We start, we came out of DARPA, Simba, Simba Chain came out of the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. Um, and so you see all these different com complex supply chains and there's all these different actors in those supply chains and they different stakeholders they all have different goals and how do you become to one consensus on with everybody in kind of a trustless system where everybody's got their own opinions and, and like I said, the goals that they're trying to achieve. And so you really want to have that uh, tracked and secure. Um, yeah. So with, with Bitcoin, Bitcoin only allowed for so many um, train, like in a transaction, you can only store so much information, like some like memo line, like you might want to put on a check you know, you could say like what it was for the transaction um, or who it's to or what different things like that. But um, with Ethereum came along on in 2013 and it, it became like the world computer is what they call it because you're allowed to do like executable programs in with transactions now. So they had this thing called smart contracts and smart contracts aren't even anything to do with like contracts and they're not smart so it's, it's basically executable code so people get confused like oh it's a binding it's not really it's just gonna it's gonna it's like a computer it'll do whatever you tell it to do and execute when you know whatever whatever things are gonna populate or or enter in so it's kind of uh it's very interesting about how all these different blockchains are coming out and there's so many different initial coin offerings and all this weird stuff that has happened with um you know with blockchain and some people some people love it. Some people don't like it. You know, it's just like, it's like I said, it's the wild west. It's the early days of the internet. So we're seeing more standards and things come out. Um, ISO has their own, I think it's TC 307. Okay. And, yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's standards coming out for blockchain. NIST has a working group that we're part of. So it's been, it's been exciting to, you know, see different things come out, but where we're seeing the most traction is believe it or not is government um, or okay. large, you know, large entities and corporations. Um, and that's really who needs the most transparency. Um, and that's what blockchain really provides is that audibility and transparency. Yeah, that's, that's very important now. Like we're talking about with the digital thread and everything that's happening and, and how people are, are getting transactions completed now in a secure way and being able to not to uh, rely on that middleman. I know you mentioned the word miner and that was something obviously that's associated to blockchain and the, you know, from, you described it a little bit, but I'm also interested in that. So w what is it that like a miner's position is basically to grab and, and validate that data first? Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So they're not only are they validating transactions, they're actually um, working on the solution to mine the next block. So it's a race. It's a race to the finish to mine the next block. And then once that block gets mined, uh, there's a reward for the mining group or the mining pool. It's, it's become so big now. And so used to be people like when I was mining back in 2009, like anybody could mine it on like a simplistic computer. Um, but now it's got really advanced into um, mining pools and, 
you need massive ASIC miners to, to, you know, program or to, you know, chain together to, to uh, solve these really complex mathematical equations and the hashes, um, they call it the hash rate and it's gotten really uh, big and hard and hard to do. So it's exciting to see where it's going. Um, and, uh, and the way miners make money is they'll, they take their, they take the currency that they've mined and they try to save some of it to, you know, build up wealth because it'll eventually increase, but then they have to sell some of it back to a fiat currency mm -hmm. to you know, pay their people or buy new equipment or whatnot. So um, we're still not completely away from this, you know, a fiat currency, which fiat is like us dollar, uh, you know, the pounds, Change, yeah. Euro, yeah, different things like that. So yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's interesting. I know that that's a lot of, I've been trying to absorb as much as I can because it's obviously a very hot topic and something that's part of the digital thread and the additive community and, and 3D printing in, in general. And I know there's, uh, as you've seen, there's a lot of different things that have been happening. A lot of new events that have popped up. Everyone has gone from having their live events. Unfortunately, we had to cancel a lot of live events uh, through this time, but everything switched over to that, that digital uh, interaction. And I know you even have an event coming up. Is it July 14th uh, that, that yep. has, that used to be an in-person annual. This is the third annual event. Is it the yep. add, Additive Manufacturing Summit? And, yep, yep. Uh, additive mean it's the additive summit.com so people can go there and check it out. Great. I'll put a link after we talk to that also in the thread. But um yeah, that's so so what's gonna be happening there and what has happened the last three years now that you're doing it digital, what are some of the differences? And if you'd like to talk a little bit more about that, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so this year we're really focusing on we've had uh, EOS on the uh, past couple of years and we've had uh, you know Siemens and We've had um, our our startup Atlas 3D, who's now a part of Siemens, um, yeah. and we've had um, Kinemetal, and so we uh, previously it was very much a regional uh, summit. So we would post it online so people could watch it later, and it's free. It's always been free, and we will maintain. We'll continue to make it free, um, and uh, you know, usually a hundred to a couple hundred people attend. Um, but this year, since it's you know everything pretty much virtual. Uh, we've now extended it to just so many people that can join it live now. So it's kind of exciting to see, you know, who will be joining us, but we've got people, um, we've got Authentize, um, we've got um, Relativity Space, uh, Link 3D, uh, yeah. Siemens again, um, Simba will be on there. Who's that guy from Siemens? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Brent Kephart. So yeah, <laughs> so Brent Kephart's going to be on there. Uh, yeah, that's our, awesome. Atlas yeah. 3D, uh, of course, yeah. now going over to Siemens and uh, Brent over there now. So that's awesome. He's a, yeah. He's a, yeah. Great to see him there. Yeah, yeah. Chad and uh, Dr. Hal Ping's over there. And so it's exciting to cool to see, you know, that kind of stuff. And and, and also that it, uh, America makes. So once again, it comes back to collaboration. Um, you know, we had uh, University of Pittsburgh, Johnson Johnson and Notre Dame and just like this cool collaboration that, you know, America makes was able to provide that environment for mm. these companies to work together to build a solution. So that was eventually exited. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah they do a lot of great work in the community America makes. And uh, of course uh, that's all part of it is everyone now even coming together a lot more to make it happen uh, virtually and, and work together on opening up the communication. So everyone could be a part of that. And that's, what's exciting to me out there. Cause it's, I think more people are talking now it's, it used to be less open. I think there's a lot more right. open conversations happening right now. And so that'll be great to see that take place. Again, that's on, what is it, July 14th? I don't want to say the wrong date. July yeah, 14th. Yep, the... July 14th. And it's, um, we did it from an, af an afternoon in the Eastern time zone. So people okay. can, um, even if you're in Europe, it'll be kind of like an evening for them. But okay. in, uh, you know, the Eastern time zone, it'll be the afternoon. And then the Pacific time zone, it's your morning. So we kind of, uh, uh, you know, did it that that way so we could get the most people able to attend and we try to all the talks are only 20 minutes long with like a 10 minute q a and we keep it rolling pretty smooth and yeah that's good. very high points and, and that's how we do it we did it in person the past few years too we just keep it um just to an afternoon and keep it keep it rolling fast yeah it's a more open for the questions so people could dig in a lot more than just hearing a presentation you could ask a lot of questions that you don't normally get a platform to do that when someone's just presenting to you. So I like that interaction there of digging, taking a little deeper dive into the conversations and, and uh, ask, answering a lot of the personal questions that people might have because they're not quite experienced at what's happening. And so that's a good platform to do. It's going to be an interesting topic to, uh, 
jump into and looking forward to that on July 14th. And is that registration link? Is that something you could find on your site? Cause I'll also take yep, that it's registration right. link. Make sure. We'll yeah. The link's the right there on the, on the homepage. Um, so additive summit.com and uh, yeah, people can register for free. Um, if there's any issues, they can always uh, email us there. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. I'll put all that information in our conversation today. Um, is there, is there any uh, thing that you see now that I know you did everything with Atlas 3d? Is there anything you see on the additive side for applications that's coming up? Yeah, I think, um, so the, really what we focused on, um, and then like I said, with the people that are on the, uh, on the additive summit that's coming up is it's really been, it's about the digital thread and digitization. So you're going to hear and, and, and how much have we all been focused lately on digitization since COVID. So yes. uh, we're going to see a lot of the, a lot of the speakers are going to be talking about what they're doing and exciting things they're doing in the, in the, in the additive space and how they're connecting, you know, different things. And so you're going to see this digital, um, uh, I, you know, I, it gets used a lot, but the digital thread, you'll see that as a, as a, a lot, a big talking point um, as, as that, as that additive summit uh, takes place here shortly in a couple in a few weeks. So yeah, it's exciting. I know that's the big part of it and uh, we'll be happy to see what happens with that summit and also what's been going on with Simba chain. It's been great having you. He's going to keep barking because he thinks I need to open the door to say hello to somebody. <laughs> but uh, th then again, you know, I just wanted to say thank you again for your time, Joel. It's, it's, it's been wonderful talking about this and I'll be, I'll, I'll of course be uh, joining the summit. So I'm looking forward to seeing that on July 14th and, and uh, I'd like to check back with you in a few months, see how things are going again. But thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Really appreciate it. And if anybody wants to check out what we're doing at Simba, it's simbachain.com. You can check it out. It's, it's free. So we're, we're a freemium platform. It's oh, exciting. nice. Yeah. And I, I'm going to go ahead and put all that information, description of the, this uh, particular topic here. So people could check that out and uh, learn a little bit more about it. And also be there July 14th for the Additive Summit here from Simba. And we're going to be looking forward to that. So thank you again, Joel. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Oh, no!